Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another layer by layer tutorial. Today is another preview. I want to take a look at the new features in Fusion 360 that have integrated support for Eagle CAD. So if you take out, if you take out the latest uh, update on August 8th, uh, there was an update to Fusion 360 and now we have a, a preview of getting integration from Eagle CAD. So there's a nice little breakdown here of all the features that are available. And uh, basically what you can do is you can take an Eagle CAD file and bring it into Fusion 360 uh, and have it render out some nice uh, things. So it'll bring in uh, 3D components, um, everything. And then you get like this really nice kind of back and forth where you can kind of make changes and then push it out and then bring it into Fusion. Uh, so I'm trying to wrap my head around exactly how the workflow is. Uh, and there's a couple of uh, things you can take a look at here. Here's a, a look at the Autodesk Eagle page. Uh, of course, this is only going to work in the latest version of Eagle, which is 8.3. Uh, so if you're into uh, doing CAM and CAD, uh, that type of stuff, uh, this might be useful for you guys. So I want to take a show you guys. So let me get started by just kind of showing, uh, this is kind of my only PCB design. Well, the second one, but this is a, uh, a super simple PCB that I designed for the Pi Girl project, and it's basically a little uh, game pad that has an assortment of buttons and a header. So it's super simple. So I designed this in Eagle 7, and it was no issue to bring it into Eagle 8.3. So if you want to download Eagle 8.3, the latest version, it is free for students. Uh, it's really important to understate that, that it is free if you... Um, if you are a student and you want to get your license, or if you already have an account with Autodesk, Autodesk, just download it and it should work just fine. Uh, that's how I was able to do it. So now that I have it open here, um, basically we have a button over here. It's called Fusion Sync. So I go ahead and click on that, and I get I get two options. Basically saying, do you want to link it to an existing design or do you want to make a new one in Fusion? I'm going to create a new one in Fusion. Now, this is a, a preview, of course, so it is a little slow, and I have quite a few folders and stuff, so I'm just going to put it in uh, the my Adafruit Projects folder, and I'll hit OK. And I'll actually bring it in. So right now, uh, they're in the process, uh, the Autodesk team is in the process of kind of taking all all the components, because there's a lot of components in, in the Eagle libraries, there's various different libraries that come with Eagle, and uh, apparently all the ones that I used are not 3D defined yet. So these little icons here basically are telling me like, hey, there's either an issue with the 3D package or there just isn't one. So unfortunately, uh, for this specific design, um, I won't be able to kind of showcase the 3D components, but I will be able to showcase some of the cool features that, um, that the team has been working on. So I'll hit push. And you notice I didn't put anything in the comments because I guess you don't need to. This is just a test. Uh, so let's see how long it takes. Uh, I'm just going to talk over this. And uh, initial, it, it's just pushing the design to Fusion, which may take a minute or so. Uh, it, does, it is beta here. And you'll notice that uh, the little button turned green. It says pushing. You may, you may close this window. Uh, I'm just going to leave it open and um, talk over it, I guess. It shouldn't take that long, maybe a minute or so, or several minutes, as it says. But let me show you what I kind of my workflow is typically to if I do ever make a Eagle CAD, I'll do it in Eagle first. Hey, look, it's done. That's great. I'm gonna hit OK, and let me finish my little thing here. So I, this is actually what I used in the Pi Girl design. Uh, I just drew it from scratch uh, and just kind of followed the exact uh, positions for all the buttons and stuff. But as you can see, there's not much detail to it. I do have my mounting holes, which is sort of the most important thing for me from a designer standpoint. And, and it's kind of the most important components, like um, the actual headers here. I think this is the IDC header box thing, and the mail header, and uh, these little buttons here. It's kind of standard six millimeter buttons, I believe. So that was very useful, and that's kind of all I needed to do in order to get uh, this this design fleshed out. And of course, um, you know, all all the sketches and stuff are, are you know pretty much follow the same dimensions as the Eagle CAD file, but you know, it could be a little bit better. So let's take a look here and see, uh, let's look for it rather. Or actually, no, in Eagle, once you have it, you have to push the design to Fusion. So now that I have it created, uh, what I guess Fusion was doing, or Eagle was doing, was taking all this stuff and doing some fancy scripts and stuff to actually get it into 3D mode. 
So now I can actually push it to Fusion. Actually, I think I already did, right? Yeah. Or no, I still have to push to Fusion. I guess I push it, and then it'll actually save it in my Eagle, or in my thing here. Or maybe it's already here. Ah, oh, there, it's coming in there. Let's maybe wait until this is done. Or maybe I already did it. I don't know. Let me open it and see what happens. Oh, okay. We'll hit no. Yeah, thanks for the message. I appreciate that. Okay, it's been successfully pushed. So it says it's up to date. So this new Fusion Sync window, I guess, gives you an idea of really they needed a way to manage how you would push and pull from a you know the electric the electrical designer and the designer the I don't know mechanical designer whatever. So they have this little window here to kind of push and pull things. So that kind of makes sense. All right, nay, take a look at that. It is in Fusion. I'm going to go ahead and open it and see what we got. Now, obviously, we did have errors on those components. So, yeah, this is super cool. Look at this. All my traces come in. Um, wow, that is really cool. All the mounting holes are here. It would take forever to redraw. That's kind of why I didn't do it. But, hey, look at that. The graphics showing up. That's really cool. So let's take a look here at the browser. So everything's broken up here as individual components, which is cool. And it looks like each component has a body and a sketch. Awesome. Now, of course, these aren't uh, the right sizes or buttons or whatever, but uh, you know, it, it had to do something. So instead of showing nothing, it kind of shows this uh, representation of the buttons and, and I guess some of these pinouts and stuff. But it's really interesting that it took um, the silkscreen graphics and kind of threw it in there. I thought the colors look hideous. It, they are there. Maybe in a future update, we'll get some kind of options to kind of choose what kind of colors we want, because green circuit boards are totally ugly, in my opinion. It's just my opinion. But hey, that's really cool that all the pinholes are here. So you could actually use this in a, in a design um, and maybe even build on top of it, maybe, I suppose. So you could probably modify some of these uh, things here. I'm not quite sure how to do it, as this is just a first look. But hey, it was really easy to get it in here. Let's try another different design. So I'm gonna try one of uh, Lamar's designs, Lamar Lady 80, of course. So I'm gonna open up the Gemma M0, which is a new board. And uh, it says it can't do it right now. So I'm gonna close this, maybe that's why. And then I'll open it again. No, I don't wanna save the board because uh, I don't know if I will mess it up or anything. And do I wanna load the schematic? Yeah, I do, of course. So there we go, here is the M0. Looking really, really beautiful. I love this, love this board. Uh, now I'm going to go into Fusion Sync again. I'll create a new Fusion Design, hit Next, and wait for all my projects to get loaded, and then I'll, I'll just throw it in one of the folders, most likely the Adafruit Projects folder. Yeah, there it is. So Adafruit Projects. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a search bar. Maybe they'll do that one day. I'll hit OK. And again, uh, all of the three, all the packages are not you know, haven't been converted to 3D yet. I'm not sure when that will happen or if I can help contribute, but that'd be really cool if I could do that. Um, again, push it. And I guess it pushes to Fusion. Then I have to push it again, I think. Now, remember, I'm not, uh, I don't know the workflow completely uh, as I am just looking at this for the first time, but it's really cool that you can do this right now uh, I, although I probably wouldn't recommend it if you're doing it for some serious work. Not yet, anyway. It's good for experimentation, as it is a preview, and yeah, it says right there, beta. So, you know, with a grain of salt, whatever they say. Okay, it says it's been done. Uh, I still have to push to Fusion, or, or no? It's already been pushed to Fusion, I believe. So if I go into my... Yeah, it says the data has been updated in my folder here. So I'm going to refresh it. And there's the Gemma M0. Oh, my God. So I'm going to open it. <laughs> Open it here, let's take a little bit, and take a look at that. Oh, huh. I could probably hide some of this stuff here. I'm not sure what this stuff is. Uh, I guess it's just like, it says Gemma M0 bottom. I don't know, what, maybe that's the bottom layer or something? I don't know. But hey, look, the silk screen is kind of there. The, the, however, the mounting holes are way off. Uh, that's probably just because um, these are custom made mounting holes. So Fusion doesn't know exactly how to treat them, I guess. Or maybe, I don't know, I'm not too sure. Uh, looks like, yeah, none of the components really are 3D-ified yet, as this is probably a part of the MicroBuilder library. So that's cool. I mean, 
it's not exactly correct. The, the, the silk screen is a little off. Maybe there's just some tools and stuff to fix that. Uh, if we go into the board, you can probably pull up decals and uh, we can edit the decal. What is that? Uh, I guess just transparency and, and some offsets and stuff. So it looks like maybe we can move it. Yeah, look, we can move it. So if it's off centered, I guess we can fix it kind of. We can scale it up and stuff. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's not perfect, but hey, it's there. It's definitely got to start somewhere. I really like that all the uh, whatever script that they wrote. It's, it's kind of neat how it's bringing in all those graphics in here and making it as a decal. So that's cool. It's only going to get better, folks. So let's go take a look at Eagle. And I'll, I'll quickly look at the control panel. You can kind of get a look at what objects or what packages have been 3D defined. It'd be nice if there was a way to filter them out um, as I was kind of digging around. And, and um, for example, uh, the switch that I used in my uh, PyGirl gamepad is from the Omeron library, which is a stock library. I mean, it comes, it ships with Eagle. Uh, let's see if I can find it, Omeron. Or maybe it's called Switch Omeron. Yeah, Switch Omeron. I don't know if I'm saying that wrong. I probably am. Um, but yeah, you can see here, processing thumbnail for the 3D package. It it, ne it, it won't process. I mean, it, it just doesn't, it's just not there yet. If I go to, however, there is now a new 3D packages subfolder. So I guess if your library supports the 3D component, it'll show up here. So what I did do is I, I did quickly look for one and this 40XX library does have a, some some of the components that's been 3D. So if you scroll down past all of the components, there is the 3D package. And if you click on one, you get this little rendering of it. It doesn't expand or grow and I can't really modify it, but hey, there it, there it is. That's kind of neat. Um, hopefully some connectors and stuff are, are being worked on. Uh, I'd love to get some connectors in here so I don't have to redraw them, but look at those little legs. Those legs are probably a pain to, to draw. Um, even with a pattern, it still, takes work to draw them. So that's really cool. Hopefully uh, we'll get some new uh, components and stuff that get made. And if there's a way to contribute, uh, I'd love to, to contribute maybe. Um, so let me know if anybody is in the Autodesk team and would like to help me out. I'd love to kind of return the favor. So this is just a quick look at getting your Eagle CAD designs into Fusion 360. I don't know why I paused there, but hey, this is kind of neat. It's just a preview. I figured I'd let you guys know how to get in there. Um, pretty neat. Um, I'll keep looking at it and seeing, keeping a close eye on uh, the, the these features, and hopefully we'll we'll have some more uh, stuff coming down. So, what what do you guys think about it? Are you into um, this? <laughs> Let me know in the comments, and uh, uh, I'd love to kind of have a discussion with you guys about it. But that's it for me, really. Just a quick look at Eagle CAD and the new features in Fusion 360. I'll see you guys next time.